Hello and welcome back to the Dore Woodman YouTube channel. This week we are discussing heat pumps and hydrogen. So it's a hot topic at the moment, you know, pardon the pun, but heat pumps and hydrogen. Now, as I'm sure you are all aware, the government has set out a 10 point plan to combat climate change and to achieve a carbon zero Britain by 2050. This is a highly ambitious task by all accounts. So, you know, how are they looking to implement this rapid decline in CO2 emissions? Firstly, and most importantly, we need to prise ourselves away from, the, from basically the grip of fossil fuel dependencies. Now, as you well know already, we are a renewable heating company. So we install, um, and if you watch our videos, you can see that we install both ground source and air source heat pumps. Now, there's been many a debate uh, online via social media, you know, in the tabloids and other news outlets with concerns of the capabilities of this technology. You know, can it supply 100% of the heating and hot water demand for your property, um, particularly in, in existing homes? Now, the simple answer is yes. Yes, they can, as long as the design parameters are met and the home has sufficient insulation. And basically, homeowners have pulled out all of the stops to ensure that they're thermally sound. There's no question that they can work hand in hand with new builds and you know, specifically underfloor heating systems. I mean, it's a no brainer, in fact, and we are seeing more and more heat pumps being installed in this fashion as opposed to putting in boilers. This is to meet EPC and SAP calculations, etc. Now, the other hope is the alternative, and I think a lot of people are really holding out for this, and that is the hydrogen revolution. Now, if you've been paying much attention to the news or, well, particularly developments in this particular sector, there's been a lot of talk about hydrogen. Um, and just recently talking about, you know, over 9,000 jobs being introduced and implemented into hydrogen and it going into the infrastructure of our gas network at the moment, testing in villages and different parts of the country. Now, unfortunately, as much as we all want and need hydrogen or this hydrogen revolution, the reality of the success of this um, to really make a huge impact in the CO2 emissions, you know, in this country or in the UK is a long, long way into the future. Now, this isn't me trying to debunk the idea, by the way, you know, this is all simply because we fit heat pumps and we're trying to divert people's attentions away from it. Far from it. Listen, we realise heat pumps uh, are not here or most certainly won't replace all of the boilers in the UK. But that said, it most definitely plays an important part um, and we should really be embracing this technology. Um, if we're going to co combat climate change, we certainly need to be looking at this as an option. Um, I'm just simply saying, you can't, we can't rely just on hydrogen coming tomorrow, being available to us and then saving our planet. It's just not gonna happen. And you know, believe it or not, even the government is singing from the same hymn sheet, although they can be a little bit murky about the details. Now, the Department of Business, Energy and Industrial um, Strategy, which is obviously chaired by Secretary of State Kwasi Kwarteng, he isn't particularly in favour of one technology over the other. In fact, if you look at their proposals and all of the studies and information from the Royal Society and the CCC, which is a committee on climate change, they actually believe in order for us to be able to achieve these goals in the timeframes that are set, there will have to be multiple technologies, both green and low carbon, working side by side and implemented throughout the whole of the UK. Now, the thing with hydrogen, as it stands, is the uncertainty. You know, this was also actually stated in a meeting they had about hydrogen on the 21st of July. And Quasi Quartain was there as the, um, one of the official speakers. Now, can we produce hydrogen en masse? Do we have the infrastructure to deliver it? You know, what are the overall efficiencies? Can our homes accept it through the service pipe work, particularly from the roadside to our homes? Is it gonna be affordable? Will it be low carbon or green production? Now, hydrogen is the most abundant element in the universe after all, not only in water, but it's in gases too. The challenge we face is the complexity, not only to extract it, but to deliver it in huge volumes. 
There are no dates or certainty that we will be able to deliver when it comes to hydrogen. And they have stated that whatever happens, it won't serve to deal with 100% of the demand that we have on fossil fuels at present. That is a fact. The production we ultimately need is green hydrogen. Now this is produced and extracted using purely renewable technologies and being carbon zero. Then there's blue hydrogen, extracting it from using fossil fuels, but with a carbon capture and storage um, situation, which reduces 80 to 90% of the emissions that it is to produce. However, unfortunately, it requires so much energy to extract it that the process is believed to be more to cause more emissions into the environment than actually directly burning coal and gas as it is, which is crazy. Now, believe it or not, 90% of the hydrogen produced globally at the moment is produced in this way. And this simply isn't sustainable in order to you know, reduce our CO2 outputs. Now, unfortunately, we simply don't have the resources at present to successfully extract enough hydrogen via renewables. We only have 40% of our general electricity produced by renewables as it is. And in order to do that with hydrogen, as well as our electricity, we need about five, six, maybe seven times as much in the renewable sector. Then of course, there are the ways or the items which we need to look to prioritize when it comes to hydrogen. So we'll produce hydrogen, but then they're gonna be priorities in which areas are the hardest to decarbonize and would need to be implemented. Cause it's not just our homes that we would need to concentrate on here. There are other major factors such as maritime logistics, you know, powering these huge shipping vessels all over the globe that are delivering goods to our stores and our homes every single day. Then there's aviation. The amount of fuel in aviation is just astronomical. 106 billion gallons of fuel used in one year, 2019. By 2050, they could see as much as 230 billion gallons of fuel being required. Hydrogen can be used to produce electricity as well. You might need electricity to produce it, but it can also factor in and be used for electricity. So that can counter away some of the fossil fuels that we need for that. And also the hardest of them all is the production of steel, cement and chemicals. These areas require an extreme amount of energy and they're very damaging to the environment. So in order to get away from these dependencies, it's gonna be difficult because the populations are growing across the globe and our needs for this type of material is you know, needed more than ever. So let's look at the pros and cons. Well, look, heat pumps are here they are now and they do work. 55 degree flow temperatures, 400% efficiency is 55 degrees for their hot water. You know, they can be incorporated to work alongside um, existing technologies such as boilers to really reduce your carbon footprint and um, particularly good if you're off gas as well so if you're off grid then of course you don't want an electric boiler but this will provide you with a very efficient uh, heating element but it does come down to the design parameters you know the cons of heat pumps well as mentioned they're not appropriate for every application you know there are certain situations and housing stocks that it just won't work in um, so we have to look for other ways in which we can reduce the CO2 emissions and other technologies, you know, to implement this in to, to try and reduce those dependencies. As for hydrogen, well, hasn't quite come to fruition just yet. There are many complications and uncertainties at this juncture. And even if it does become available, it could be more expensive per kilowatt hour than electricity, for instance. Um, they reckon that they'll only be able to produce about 20 to 35 percent for all the households within the next 10 years. And it's going, to be a pro, uh, it's going to be a slow process. And we need to be patient. Um, I think it's fair to say that, you know, we are in a crisis here with the climate and we need to act swiftly. So there lies just a few hurdles and this is a very large subject to cover. So we will look at different elements of this in further episodes. Please hit that subscribe button, like, share and comment. We'd like to hear your opinions on this. Um, and, you know, we'd like to hear the comments. We've had comments from previous videos about, um, you know, heat pumps, etc. And it's a good way to engage with people and kind of listen to your views, because that's just as important as our own. 
Thank you for watching and we will see you guys on the next episode.